sir. How you doing? I'm well. How are you? I am a okay. Um, welcome to Artist Spotlight, um, the place where we get to understand, get to know fellow local artists in the Atlanta area. And you are one of those guys that I've known of for quite some time. It's been a few years. I've seen your journey. And I'm appreciative of the talent that you give the community Thank and you. the world. I think you're super dope. So Thank you. I'm happy that you decided to do this. Um, but let the audience get to know you a little bit. We'll start off with the personal questions, <laughs> the let's get to know you questions. <laughs> for example, introduce yourself. Hi, what's up? Um, my name is Larry Philly Carter. Uh, my stage name is Philly, like the city. Um, yeah, that's me. I sing, act, write, produce, and lately direct. So, yeah. <laughs> Where are you from originally? Uh, originally, I was born in uh, Pennsylvania. Then my family moved to Virginia. So I grew up and went to high school um, in Virginia. Okay. And... You have a big family, small family? I have a, a large family, I would say. So it's um, my parents and then I have two older sisters. And my older sister has six kids and my middle sister has two. And then uh, my older sisters, some of her kids have kids. So it's like, it's a large immediate family. Do you have any kids? I do not have any children as of right now. All right. So, you live in Atlanta. How long have you lived in Atlanta? I've been in Atlanta for 16 years now. Okay. Yeah. And what has that life been like? <laughs> the Cliff Note version. <laughs> Cliff Note version. I moved here with a dream and ambition. And I've worked hard over 16 years, met some great people, uh, met some not so great people. Uh, but I take those good experiences from those not so great people to build my experience here in Atlanta. So I feel like Atlanta has really birthed me, if you want to say it like that. <laughs> okay. So what does Larry Carter do for a living? Larry Carter for a living does many things. <laughs> uh, right now, I, well, my main um, occupation that pays most of the bills, well, all of the bills, really. But <laughs> um, I work in um, underprivileged, well, underserved communities. That right now I focus on the LGBTQ plus, as well as um, the Black African American uh, for the federal government. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, how does that profession help you? or push you toward the entertainment profession? Because those are like two completely different things. <laughs> well, those two things are different, but they're similar because I look at my work I do there as advocacy work. And I feel like what I do with my music and my entertainment is advocacy as well. I try to choose roles that I feel like are important to be um, shown in a relatable way that can kind of push forward um, safety, um, security, show people that there's a future in different avenues of our lives. And when I say our, I mean um, LGBTQ plus as well as being a black man. Um, both of those are dual roles that I focus on in my life. Neither outweigh the other. Okay. So you mentioned uh, earlier that you do a little bit of a lot, mm -hmm. especially <laughs> regarding entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, what do you feel like you sit the best in? Is it music? Is it film and acting? Um, I feel like I sit the best in advocacy work. So <laughs> by uh, that being my passion, what vehicle I use to drive that passion, uh, it doesn't really matter to me, all of them. It's like having children. You don't love any one of your children the most, uh, but you love them in different ways sometimes. Makes sense. So when did you, at what age were you when you found out or felt that you had a voice to sing? Um, when I was maybe 11, I sat down with my aunt and like she taught me how to structure and write songs. Because I told her this is something that I was interested in doing. Um, and I like always have been interested in entertainment. I just didn't understand it. And then I didn't think it was possible. 
So I focused more on academics instead of entertainment for a while because that was something that I could control and that was something that I could see a future in from where I was located in my life, if that makes sense. At 11, what music spoke to you the most? Oh, R&B spoke to me the most. Like, I grew up in church. My grandfather uh, was a Baptist bishop. And, um, like, you know, gospel music is great. And I, and I love it. And that is, <laughs> that is where I'm rooted. And I know, like, a lot of R&B music is rooted in gospel music. Um, but I wanted to take it a different step further and touch on some topics that might not fit in like a gospel genre, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, let's get a little more personal. <laughs> um, when did you discover that you were a member of the LGBTQ community? When did I discover I was a member of the LGBT community? That is a tricky question and this is why, because I didn't know what it was. I knew I was different, but I really didn't know how. Um, we didn't talk about gay people in my family. Um, I didn't really see any representation. It wasn't on TV. It, I mean, it just didn't exist. So I was trying to figure out what was wrong with me and if I could fix it, if that makes sense. So I, I knew from a young age I was different, but I didn't know exactly what it was. Were you, describe your personality younger, because you know, people would look at the Instagram that you have today <laughs> and think whatever it is that they want to think. Um, describe your personality <laughs> going from <laughs> to now. That's so true. People think what they want to think. But um, when I was younger, I was really, really shy and timid. Um, I was a people pleaser. Uh, yeah, I didn't really have a voice, and that is why I did start writing in general. Like, I started writing maybe when I was, like, seven or eight. I would, like, journal my feelings because I had an issue verbalizing my feelings uh, to the point where, like, I literally had ulcers where my mom had to take me to the doctor and get prescription medicine to handle my ulcers just from internalizing all of my feelings and things that were happening. Um, so journaling kind of helped me uh, move through and process some of those feelings I was having. And then um, a few years later, when I felt a little bit more secure and being vulnerable with sharing my writing, um, that's when I went to my aunt to ask how to write songs. Do you think that it's important for artists to speak about their sexual orientation? Um, I don't think it should be required of artists because everybody's at a different point in life and different people need different things. So you can't just give a blanket statement of people should. I try not to. I try to stay away, to, away from that. But for me, I know uh, the life that I exist in and the space I exist in is a safe space. So I can do the music I want to do. I can say what I want to say. There's no label that's going to drop me. There's nobody that's going to defund me and try to make me go away. Nobody can really cancel me because I'm doing my own thing. So there's no danger in me being a voice or an advocate. So I feel like when you do exist in spaces like that, it is important to be an example for those people like me and I do it for people, kids like me who don't have examples anywhere. At least if I could have logged online and found somebody that I identified with, I think I would have felt just a little bit more secure and a little bit better. Um, and that's kind of what drives me to share my life the way I do. Do you have a difficulty with um, showcasing same ginger love in uh, your music videos versus <laughs> heterosexual love in your music videos? So the funny thing about that is, and I'm going to say, because I've been doing it for a long time. It's more popular now and more accepted now. And so like my video, I love him, came out in maybe like 2014. And you didn't see as many people doing same gender love stuff. And I got so much pushback from the gay community, 
from, oh, you trying to use your marriage to be a gay liberty, whatever that is. Like these are people who never met me, never sat down and asked the question of why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, but they've created this idea of who I was and what I was trying to do from their perspectives. And through this whole process, I've learned to allow people to have that because I can only control what I put out into the world. I can't even control your life experiences because what you're telling me is if you were me, that is why you would do the things I do. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't necessarily mean that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's just what you would do if you had the same situation I do. And that's your business. And if that's your, percep that's your perception, that's your perception. And, and I'm good with that. And I've learned to be good with that. You'll be surprised. Like people have like said things to my husband like, oh, he's an attention whore. He just wants this. He just wants that. And my husband's like, so you don't even know him for you to even try to make this type of claim where we've literally sacrificed. We've literally put ourselves on the front line. We so we're receiving pushback from straight people and we're receiving pushback from gay people while we're trying to push forward gay rights. It was like a really, um, a really perplexing situation to be in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know all too well. It's very interesting how that works, though. Uh, we just did a video on Culture Club about the same thing, you know, oppressed people. Oppressing people, hurt people, hurt people. Mm -hmm. But this is about artist spotlight. You know <laughs> Eight years trying to figure out the community and the wolves. Um, this album titled Worthy. Mm -hmm. I love that title. Thank you. It could go so many directions. Mm -hmm. um, this is your fourth upcoming album. Mm -hmm. Explain the journey from your first album in 2007. <laughs> Y'all need to look at those pictures. Look at those pictures. 2007. Uh, no, don't all look at those way, pictures. <laughs> all the way to now, 2020, going into 2021. That's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a baby when I did that first project and I had just gotten here to Atlanta a few years. I, I feel like I just established myself where I could really invest in my career. And what people don't understand is I don't know where they think money comes from to do stuff or they, they think stuff is free. So like literally <laughs> I'm working a job to pay for these things and pay for studio time and do the best that I can with the resources that I have, you know, and it's like, um, and that's what I did in, in each album, um, as I established myself more and had more access to resources, uh, the projects became better, uh, the sound became better, um, concepts, just the whole, you know, it's just a growth, it's just a process. And I mean, all artists go through that, um, I think when you see major artists, they have a label behind them. So they have a whole team of people making these decisions, picking songs, writing songs, picking clothes, picking pictures, taking pictures, where in 2007, it was just me, <laughs> myself and I, <laughs> styling, <laughs> writing songs, recording, uh, taking pictures, doing everything. Uh, even that, <laughs> that album cover, I made it on my computer <laughs> and it's so funny, you know, to look back at it and see um, just the span and growth of how uh, consistency, where people have seen me be consistent and consistently grow, which help they're willing to lend themselves and their craft to my craft to help me become better and stronger and more of a presence. And I am grateful for every person that I've worked with who've helped me from 2004 when I moved to Atlanta until today and into tomorrow. I'm always going to be grateful because I definitely would not be here if every person along the way, good, bad, and ugly, um, wasn't in place to play their role to either push me or slow me down or do whatever to really get to this point um, where it's funny, you say worthy, and, and I thought this project should be called worthy because that's what it is. I'm standing in my worthiness because I'm worthy to be here. Um, everything that I'm doing 
is for me and I know every room I walk into, I belong there and I'm going to treat it like that. In every interview I do, I'm going to talk like that because I'm here for a reason. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of good things though. Um, you, said, you said a lot of great things. Uh, you're speaking to a lot of people. Um, there are so many individuals in this world that uh, for whatever reason or for a lot of reasons don't feel like they are worthy, especially that one line when I step into the room, I know that I'm worthy and I know that I belong there. Um, that's, that's another eight years of videos <laughs> that we can talk about that concept. Um, so I'm going to say thank you for uh, naming the album Worthy. I think that speaks to a lot of people. Um, I love the cover art for the album. Thank you. What goes behind that? So that picture, uh, <laughs> that wasn't even a concept that I came up with, and I have to give credit where credit is due. Um, Elvis is the photographer who shot it, and he was like, I just want to try something. He's like, it's kind of like a headshot, but not really, you know, it's going to look like just the top of your body, <laughs> and let's just try it. And um, I was like, this is weird, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> And when I saw it, um, what I saw was the essence of me. Just everything stripped away. And it's just you, um, you know. And in this journey of life, I feel like that is our journey. We have a lot of um, different actors that come and go throughout our journey. But it's solely us from birth to death. And that's really what I wanted to show is like, it's just me. I don't need money. I don't need cars. I don't need clothes. I don't need people. I'm worthy in the skin that I'm in. Just me. I love that line. We have a lot of actors <laughs> that come in our lives. Yeah. Just, yeah. We get along for a reason. We, get along for a reason. Uh, we see each other. Um, so, Worthy, how many tracks are on Worthy? There are 10 tracks on Worthy. Okay. Um, what is your top three? tracks that you would tell people to listen to these three first <laughs> before you know um well worthy itself is the title track i think that is important and that's why that was one of the first singles i wanted to get out because we are in a in a very very tumultuous time in our country um <laughs> that was released in august and you know during the unrest and the administration and all these different things happening and the divisiveness being on TV every single day, you need to know before you leave the house that you are worthy. And I think everybody should hear that track. My cousin, she downloaded it. She lives in um, North Carolina, what's up with? And she was like, Chip, because my Chip off the old block, that's my nickname. <laughs> but she's like, Chip, I listened to your song. She was like, I was having such a hard day and I was about to go off and I got in the car and your song came on. And I was like, you know what, Chip, right, I am worthy. You know what, I don't even need to worry about this. And that is really where it was coming from, is just for people to hear that, have that moment in time to just bring them back. So worthy is one. I'll say ambivalence is one. I love that song. Uh, yeah, from my soul. I just love it. Um, and ah, third one, Jesus, this is so hard. Um, it's a tie between dreams and frustration. Um, dreams because everybody has a dream and I, I detailed through the song like I'll, I'll move heaven and earth just to be able to better myself. The, so moving towards my dreams, I can sacrifice, I can fail time over and time again, but my dreams are dependent on me. So I'm gonna keep pushing through because they're on the other side. And when it was written, because it, it was me and um, two other writers who wrote it, I was focused on what I want my future children to know because they are my dreams. So all the process that I'm going through as a black gay man to have children. There's so many different hurdles from finances to finding the right surrogate to this and that and the third and the law. So many hurdles, but I'm gonna push through all of that because you are my dream and my dreams will be realized. 
All right. Come on with it. <laughs> no, that was a lot. Sorry. <laughs> no, you got it. When does the uh, album release? The album is released on December 13th, which is my birthday. Um, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, LOL stands for? Love Out Loud. Love Out Loud. Yes, All Love right. Out Loud. That was important to me, too. I would have said that, but I felt like because that was one of the first singles, too, that would have been too typical. But that's important, too. Okay. So describe <laughs> the process of making that video. Oh, that video was fun to make. I was super nervous, as I always am before I do anything, uh, just just because it's a level of vulnerability, and I try to push myself past the last thing I've done every time I do something. Um, and yeah, it was during COVID, and I had an idea to you know have people involved, and then at the last minute I scrapped the idea because I was just like. It's just too dangerous. I don't want to put people in danger. So it'll just be me, you know? So we had to pull out <laughs> some ideas and um, it was shot in my house. And, and you'll see throughout this project, I am using my house because I don't need to go pay somebody else. I pay a mortgage every single month. My house is worthy of being seen just like any of these other spaces. So it is what it is. <laughs> what would you tell um, another fellow artist out there that could be watching this particular video and listening to your story? What would you tell them regarding chasing after their dreams or going after their dreams? What I would tell somebody who is pursuing their dreams is never stop. Be consistent. Push forward. Expect 50 no's. And that's what I do. I expect 50 no's. Cause you know what? People are gonna say no just because they don't know you, they never heard of you, they don't like what you do, and that's fine. But if you expect 50 no's, there's gonna be a yes before you get to know 50. And that's what you have to remember is you're pushing forward for your dream. Your vision, no one else is gonna invest in your vision the way you are. No one else is gonna pursue, pursue your dream the way you are. So keep that at the forefront of your mind and don't let other people discourage you because it's not their dream. I'm not gonna come to your house and clean your toilets the same way you're not gonna uh, push my dream unless you see something for yourself in it. So you have to keep that in your mind. You uh, said earlier uh, at the beginning of this interview that you directed um, or you are a director and so you've directed some visuals for this particular album. I saw some of the promotion and I had a lot of questions. I was like, what's going on with this? And what's happening? And who's that kid? And, and what's going on here? Um, so you have, is it, a, is it a, like a visual movie for the album or explain the process? All right, so the worthy experience is the actual visual it's like a mini movie it's about um 19 minutes long um and it is a storyline loosely based on my life so everything you see did not happen in my life some of it is entertainment so <laughs> so don't try to figure out who's who and who did what to who don't <laughs> just enjoy it <laughs> but but it's a 19-minute it's a, um, visual uh, that really tells the story of from uh, birth to rediscovering your worthiness. I believe we're all born worthy. Like, you fought as a little sperm, millions of other sperms floating along with you. And you made it and fertilized that egg. You went through nine months or ten months of pregnancy to be birthed. You are here for a reason. And life experiences will try to change your idea of yourself. Um, and like I said earlier, these different actors that come in and out of your life. And when I say actors, everybody pay, plays a role and they play their part. When you see a movie, the villain is just as important as the good guy. So think about your life in that same way. Um, trauma's gonna happen. And how you deal with that trauma is really how you come out better on the other side. So it's kind of a journey through um, trauma that kind of touched me in different ways and how I came out on the other side. Nice. 
Yo, he's so well spoken and so <laughs> intelligent. You know, people tell I used to I, I used to hear, I think when we went to um the Halloween party way back when, um you came as Odell Beckham. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody was like, Oh my god, Odell is here. <laughs> I was like, how long have people been saying you look like that guy? Uh, since then, <laughs> since then, I get it all the time. Even um, you know how Facebook has like the Facebook recognition. Like when somebody posts a picture of him, it'll come up in my Facebook recognition. I'm like, that's not me. And it, I mean, it's definitely. I think he's attractive. I think he's a beautiful man. So it's never a disrespect. It's always a compliment, definitely. Um, but I don't necessarily see it, I guess, because I see myself all the time. But I can appreciate it. <laughs> do you have any features on this album, Worthy? I do not have any features as of yet. I was about to say, what you too good to be featuring? There's so many <laughs> local artists out here that would love, probably love to feature with you. Like, are you not? What's going on? I'm open, I'm open to it. So we were... Um, I was recording Worthy during the height of the pandemic yeah. as well as the height of quarantine. Makes sense. So it was like very few people in the studio um, and just in, in, in this process was different from any other project I've done because it was every Friday. So every Friday I would meet the producer at the studio. We would come in. He would say, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? He'll create a beat in four hours. He'll create a beat will write to it and record it in that four hour block. And the idea was to get a very organic thing out instead of taking it home. And then it's a different energy at home that gets looped in and all of this stuff. Like the people in the room right now in this moment, what are we feeling? What are we doing? Let's put it down and make it. So that's why there's no features, but I am open to working with different artists. I've always been open. Who you want to work with? Let's call it out. Let's bring it out. Everybody. I don't think I'm going to work with everybody. <laughs> I, I've seen some artists out there. And you know, no, I to, see it, I to see each it. his own. Yeah. But, you know. I mean, hey. when I say everybody, I mean people that I compliment their style and they compliment my style. I think that's important. And one uh, collaboration that I did that did not... Um, Get released is with Earth Tone in Philly, which I think he's a dope rapper, and we we did a song together, but it just it fell in a really weird time frame for me, so it didn't get released. Um, but I definitely would love to work with him again. Um, I mean, I'm open to working with. A lot of people. I, I can't name everybody off the top of my head. I wasn't prepared for that question. <laughs> I'm not well spoken. I'm very intentional. So I say what I mean and I don't have to retract or say I misspoke and all of those things. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I guess I can say <laughs> if you are an artist watching this particular interview, hit him up. Yeah. He's down to see if the connection is there. <laughs> Cause you know you can't you can't work with everybody. That's that's it's just not physically possible. But yeah. I work with I work with people who are you know doing their thing definitely. Makes sense. So we're gonna end this off in, in a little little second here. <laughs> um, but I am going to play pick one with you before we end off this okay. interview. And <laughs> pick one. I'm going to name two things mm -hmm. and you have to pick one or the other you okay. cannot uh, say neither and you cannot say both you have to pick one or the other are you ready sure sure thing music or movies movies acting or singing singing Atlanta lifestyle or somewhere else Atlanta lifestyle Oh, that's nice. I just knew you were going to say something in the hell. I knew you were going to say that. Um, uh, vacation cruise or a resort cruise? Uh, resort. Okay. Um, sex or dinner? Sex. <laughs> uh, shower or bathing? Bathing. Interesting. Usually people like showers. You know. mm, I like to take baths. I take baths regularly. Well, that's good. That's good enough. <laughs> that's good enough. Um, the beach or the couch? The beach. Okay. Wine 
or alcohol, like vodka? Oh, uh, dessert wine. Dessert wine. <laughs> Chicken or shrimp? Shrimp. Whitney Houston or Mariah Carey? Whitney Houston. You said that fast. Uh, <laughs> Beyonce or Sierra? <laughs> Beyonce. Avant or Carl Thomas? Carl Thomas. All right, you said that fast too, but no. I love know. Carl Thomas. Okay. Summer rain. Yeah, that's my shit. <laughs> <laughs> SWV or TLC? Oh, that's not, that's different. <laughs> um, sheesh. <laughs> I'm gonna go with TFC. All right. Uh, 702 or in Vogue? In Vogue. Okay. You don't remember 702? I love 702. Okay. <laughs> I love, I still love you. Hey! <laughs> People don't know that, but that was a dope single on that Star. My, it should have been. My, that was in my car. That should have been a hit. Last night, I went to dinner with a friend and I was playing <laughs> 702 coming back. I was, I love 702. Me too. All right. Um, <laughs> so it's known, I love them both. The original In Vogue group or? Uh, the original In Vogue group. Oh, you said that real fast. No. <laughs> There's no alternative. <laughs> All right. And the last one is Trump or Biden? <laughs> really? <laughs> Biden all there day. There are a lot of people out there that love Trump. Trump got over 70 million votes. And Biden got over 75 million. <laughs> Majority rules. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. Well, this was, uh, a pr I appreciate you coming <laughs> by again for uh, doing this uh, interview. Is there anything that you would like the audience to know before we close off about your album, about what's coming out, what they should look forward to. Yes. First, I want to say, know that you are worthy. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you watching. Uh, the Worthy Experience is going to be premiering at 8 p.m. on December 3rd on my YouTube channel. And that's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, on my YouTube channel. So it's the 18 minute movie. I'll be there answering questions, looking at your comments. So please come. Uh, December 13th, which is my birthday, uh, my album Worthy will be available everywhere for streaming and download. Download it. Um, you can pre-download it actually now on iTunes. It's available to be purchased now and it'll just download at midnight on the 13th. What a great birthday present. Buy my album. But no, seriously, I really want to say follow your dreams. Um, if you haven't heard it today, I love you. Um, and you're worth being loved, you're worth love, you're worth success, you're worth all of those things. All right, until next time.